Hello everyone, Jackie Bing here. Welcome back to PhD Racing Lab, where we are preparing to head off for Grid Life Midwest, the big party of the year. Hell, we even rushed back from California for like 42 hours, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But tragedy struck as we got back to base. Your boy wasn't feeling too well on the way, and then we got home, we were like, okay, we've got to check this. I tested positive for COVID. That's a kick in the dick. You put all the effort together, everybody trying so hard to try and get the car ready. And you know, so many people can't make it to the event when the car isn't ready, but the driver is just being eager to go. And we're the opposite. How, how can this be? How, how is this even possible? The car is ready and the driver is like nowhere to be found. We just need a half competent driver. We just need someone who I don't know. We, <laughs> we just need a half competent wow. driver with some time at Gingerman. Maybe Bailey got to a sub 40. 38.9. 38.9. Maybe someone with some Subaru experience. Maybe maybe someone who's used to working on this car. Maybe someone who had driven this car somewhere. And maybe someone, I don't yeah, know. I don't know who that is. I don't know. <laughs> Alex didn't test positive. Very luckily. Uh, we, we even checked twice. We checked twice. I tested positive twice and he tested negative twice, which is pretty incredible. And so, as PhD racing manager, I have decided that he is going to <laughs> Why do you look so dejected? I'm sending him with that car to Grid Life. And if you don't, don't get it first, you're not coming home. Well, I'm going away with your car. Shit. No, that's kind of the best case scenario, you know. Yeah, uh, I still have a few customers I want to support, you know. I mean, I always want to drive the car, so I know Gingerman might as well just have a little bit of fun. And also, just, you know, make sure the car is okay. In case this guy recovers, like, quick enough, then uh, I can just, you know, show up and put some laps down and just him, uh, humiliate me in the, during the process. It's just fun, dude. We finally get, like, you always talk about, like, oh, he wants to drive more, he wants to drive more. And the all, only thing he drives is the Sequoia and the big red truck in the back. And finally, we get to, like, send, like toss him a bone. And this is, like, the perfect scenario because, you know, like, I'm, I'm done, done. I'm not going to be able to make it this weekend, I just don't think. Like, I, judge, just judging from how I feel, I don't think I'm going to be ready in time. So, perfect scenario. You get the car for the weekend. Yeah, driver. The reserve driver, literally. This is this is like my my Nico Hulkenberg. He may not ever podium, but he will. You will be the superstar. Okay, we'll go get packed up, yeah. and he's gonna pick up the video from Gingerman. Bye. All right, boys and girls. I literally just got here, went through the timing, registered, and um, they very nicely put me in the front of Group B because I haven't put down the time. I hope I figure this car out quickly enough so I don't hold up anybody else. We're Jackie. <laughs> He's sick at home. Oh, sick in the. So you'll do better than him. I hope so. So make sure he knows that. Yeah, he'll thanks. No pressure. Uh, thanks. I right, hope the camera angle's good.
USB, you know, throttle, hero throttle. Here is Alex Lee behind the wheel. Uh, Alex competing for PhD Racing in lieu of uh, Jackie Ding being here this weekend. Lee sails off into turn one. And this car does hold the street modified rear wheel drive record at a 32.0. That's the time I mentioned a moment ago. Again, best time this session of a 35.994. About three seconds off of the best that this car has ever run. And keep in mind, right, this is the guy who's normally the crew chief, not the driver, so I think he's doing an incredibly good job. And I wonder how much that plays in, right? Because if you have your hands on the car a lot, it's got to be really intriguing to jump in and now feel all the adjustments you've been making, yeah. right? Because it's one thing to make adjustments on the car and know what to play with to get a certain response. It's another to actually feel it. And maybe Alex uh, feels something different that Jackie doesn't feel, or Jackie feels something that Alex wouldn't see. So there's a lot of communication that has to happen, and, and why it's, I think it's important to have a second set of hands on a race car, just to get a second opinion. I think they're going to learn a lot by having Alex in the car this weekend. I think so, too. And, you know, one of the things that can sometimes happen is when you get the crew chief, the mechanic, and engineer or whatever behind the wheel of a car, um, every once in a while, they will never go as fast as the driver simply because they've got mechanical empathy. <laughs> and they are, I don't want to, this thing's beautiful, I don't want to tear it up. And the driver goes, hey, if I tear it up, you're there to fix it, you know. I'm maybe like seventh in street mod or even eighth right now. Car has a lot in it. Car is absolutely nuts. I've been looking with... Um, Jackie after session two. I'm losing a lot less in the low speed corner compared to him, but I'm losing big time on the high speed. Turn five alone was almost a second from me just being over slowing. And then another big one is like a 789 complex. Exit of seven, I'm okay, but the mid corner, the transition, the speed adjustment, I'm just killing way too much speed. I'm not trusting the car enough, even though the car technically have absolutely no problem doing it. So I'm just like over slowing everywhere. Anyway, I gotta, I gotta drive. I gotta just gonna trust the car a little bit more, carry a little bit more speed everywhere. You know, not suck because you know having a car this capable, but you know not delivering is quite stressful.
drop end of day one down to a 34.7. I think currently sitting P5, Super K at a 33.2. So basically I gotta find another second half to wing it, which I think I got a little bit more, but I just don't know if we got a second half. Um, Jack has been helping me remotely with uh, data and video and everything. So I've been sending him videos and data just to try to analyze on where I'm losing big time. I think the temperature overall today is relatively on the slightly warmer side of things. And uh, compared to that, that time uh, we came over for testing. So um, we're losing about like a six, seven mile an hour top speed on the technically the same tune, right? So not sure exactly what's going on, but we're gonna look at it a little bit more. And uh, also I did run low on uh, math injection in the last session. So we're gonna have to top it up. But anyway, so go back, look at video, look at more data and see where I'm messing up more and see if I can find that time. Yay! <laughs> The next day. Final day, session one done, found a 10th. Yeah, on that lab, I think I fucked up turn one, slightly fucked up turn three, definitely fucked up turn seven. So if I just clean these up, because by the time I got to like turn three, I was like two and a half tenths, three tenths down. Turn seven, I honestly don't know what happened. I I braked, then I think the car kind of twitched a little because when I hit the brake, the car wasn't straight enough. So I kind of did a slight twitch in a panic and the creep thing early so i fucked it up that corner probably like a half a second alone so yeah rough but you know i'm having a blast driving the car but just the thing is it's it's a lot of car the best way i can describe it is just it's like a giant puppy it's incredibly powerful but it wants to play it doesn't want, it, it doesn't feel scary but it just it's a lot of power and it's a lot of performance that's there if you can tap into it and uh, for me it just it's um it's a bit of struggle because I'm not used to the car. It's 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 a lot. It's a lot more on the table than what I can handle right now. I'm gonna go out again and just see if we can clean it up. Even though, yeah, even if the condition's not good, I'm gonna still try to keep seven cam put more because I think there's more in my driving than just the track condition. Also, I really want to showcase the brand new Titan Seven TD6 Ease. 
that we debut on the car this event except I forgot to film anything so they're really covered in this fine bronze um, and black brake dust now but the bags are actually still mostly the original color look at it I really really like them and I know they look bulky and heavy which is not you know good like a lot of people didn't like that but they're actually really light because if you look at the back of the spoke the entire back of the spoke in the middle are all machined now so they're actually in, in terms of weight they're actually pretty comfortable with the um, other TS5s that we've been using and also I think it's a good timing to show off our friends because I've been busy I didn't really film anything so this is Rubens 2021 Supra relatively basic prep Titan 7 CSG pads Nankong CR1s CRS and a relatively basic street GT build, like nothing too crazy. Then we got Tim here, a <laughs> basically 2021 CKS suspension, CSG pads, PhDs. Uh, basically, they're kind of we almost call that it's uh, the spec super right now because they just work control arms and everything. But you know, he also dailies the car. And then we got our friends, Alan's GT3 RS.1. But I think he got drunk last night, so he skipped the first session. Yeah, <laughs> don't party too hard before track days, people. And yeah, the end, the third uh, track car is uh, Brendan's, also 2021 Supra. This one's slightly more built. It got um, AP kit, Titan 7s, got suspensions, bucket C, the rear's stripped out, got a lightweight battery. Brendan's car is slightly more, say like a dedicated track car because Tim and uh, Ruben, they actually still daily drive those things. They're both in Street GT for this weekend, I think. And um, they're running really good lap time and all of them are comparing notes to everybody because the spec on these cars are so close that basically every session they collect so much data and they kind of just talk to each other and teach each other, all right, what did I find this time? What did I this time that didn't work? What did I time? What did I do on that corner that did work? So, you know, trying to help each other improve, which, you know, all the whole PhD thing is about. Like we try to get everybody together, have fun and also drive better. Yeah, but I don't know. I got two more sessions today. So yeah, they just tell me they might be expecting rain today, but we'll see. Regardless of condition, I'm gonna go for at least one more try before it gets too ridiculously hot in the afternoon. So I'm having fun. And I hope everybody else is having fun too. So the transponder on the car ran out of battery, which is um, my mistake. I should have charged it more. I charged it for like maybe half an hour, 45 minutes this morning. I thought it was going to be enough, but it wasn't. But regardless, I didn't go any faster. So that kind of matters a lot less. Basically did two laps and uh, it started raining. Kind of wish I was here on Thursday, but you know, you, you, you don't always get everything you wanted for, right? I think we're still P5 in class and I think 11th overall out of like 110 cars, which I'm personally okay with. It's a very steep learning curve for me for sure, but I just had a blast driving it. To be fair, I'm pretty proud of not myself, like not the driving part, but the things that we've been able to achieve with the Supra, it's, it's like quick and everything worked like clockworks on the car for the whole weekend. All I needed to do is just put fuel in it, change tire in it, then, you know, keep on going, which is, amazing considering most of the other people that within my you know range of lap time um well the mclaren obviously it's a you know it's a mclaren but i feel like that be able to use our experience to build a super that just is easy to handle on the track is um i'm pretty proud of that part i'm not proud of my driving but i'm proud of what we achieved uh, what we've achieved and what we built in the last two and a half years basically well i guess next time we still have to put um jackie back uh, behind the wheel and uh then he can show you what the car really can i don't know for me like this weekend kind of did a little thing for me i kind of want to get back to driving a little bit more just because like how rusty I've become just in terms of driving and also how much more the cars are capable now compared to the last time I really seriously competed like you know 134 might not be a winning time but it's still like my, my head still hurts from just driving the car it's intense it's it's a lot of car and um it's the car can offer me more what than what my driving skill can offer right now and that's kind of I think that's my main takeaway from this whole weekend I enjoyed it but yeah um so yeah thanks for all your support it's 
been a bit of a weekend for me. The event still goes on for one more day on Sunday, but I think we're just gonna call it a day and go home and then today because it's been like a non-stop two weeks for me and Jackie. Like we were at Laguna Monday and then basically we, like I was here Friday morning. I'm gonna take a break after this. Thanks for watching, bye.